Place, Chicago, 1975, Queenie's Bedroom, nighttime. Queenie and Candace are in Queenie's bedroom. Candace is spending the night with Queenie so she can help her study for her history exam. Queenie is seated in the middle of her bed. Her hair is in a six inch wide natural. She has on white cotton pajamas with pictures of Martin Luther King Jr. printed on them. A history book lays on the bed beside her. Candace is sitting in a chair that's turned backwards. Her hair is in long braids. She has on white cotton pajamas with pictures of Mountain with Malcolm X printed on them. Brother Ramsey, the Black Muslim minister, finally got our high school to include Black studies in their curriculum. I plan to take you down to the community center the next time he comes to speak to us. He says, now we will get an opportunity to learn about the people of our race who did great things instead of that half-page paragraph of a book from Black history that says nothing about how our ancestors really survived in this country. Let's get started, Queenie. I want you to ace this test. What was Sojourner Truth's famous quote? When was she born and when did she die? Come on. Huh? Come on, Queenie. We were just talking about her the other day. Uh, ain't a woman born in 1797 died November 26, 1883. Candace reaches over and slaps hands with Queenie. Our Black female hero who rescued over 700 brothers and sisters from slavery during the Civil War. Her name, when she, when she was born, and when did the sister soldier die? Uh, Harriet Tubman, born 1820, died March 10th, 1913. That's what I'm talking about. The preacher brother that caused the, the slave rebellion in the 18th century. Nat Turner, born 1800, died November 11th, 1831. Why do I have to learn Black history? I already aced my American history test, Candace. Girl, white American history tells you little or nothing about who you are. It is written to tell the white man's history, not ours. I don't really see any differences. We all live in the same country, go to the same schools. What does it really matter? They are interrupted when the door slowly opens and Redbone peeps inside the room. His red hair is shaved around the sides and a big wide red afro sits on top of his head. Didn't I tell you to knock before in opening my door? I'm sorry, I guess I forgot. Redbone climbs onto the bed beside her. Oh, where have you been? Hi, Candace. Where you get those pajamas? From the brother selling clothes down the street, you see these pictures? They're of Malcolm X, one of the greatest Muslim leaders of this country. Really? They're neat. <laughs> Mama took me over to Grandpa's house to see 7-Up. You know Aunt Auntie Lily, Uncle Joe, and 7-Up lives with Grandpa now? Yeah, Grandpa just got out the hospital. He needs someone to stay with him since he can't take care of himself. Grandpa let us come up to his room and watch some old movies about Black history. He told us they were, they were classics back in the day. <laughs> Grandpa let you guys in his room? He must really be feeling lonely. Rebo, what kind of movies were your grandfather showing you guys? He was showing us movies of black history and how this white dude over in Africa took care of the African people. They called him King of the Jungle. What white man was a king in Africa? In the movie Grandpa Had His Watch, this white dude was living in a, a jungle in Africa. Uh, Grandpa told us those Africans loved him. They didn't do nothing until he, uh, until he told them what to do. All the animals loved him too. The animals over in Africa are wild. What was Grandpa showing you guys that made it look like some white dude had, had them tamed? And what else did Grandpa have you two learn from those old movies while he sat in the background laughing? We learned how uh, Tarzan, that was his name. He lived in Africa and was the king of the jungle. Grandpa said he was there taking care of all the Africans. We saw lots of old movies of how Africans lived and how Tarzan took care of them. Grandpa told us lots of things about black history we didn't know before. Redbone kicks off his shoes. He's wearing red socks that are matching his red shirt. He gets more comfortable on Queenie's bed and flips through her history book. Candace stands up. That's the kind of brainwashing the white man used on us back in the day. The same way he used the Bible to keep us thinking in a subservient mindset. Now, Candace, don't be knocking the Bible. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. used that Bible to get us where we are today. Mama told me that. He sure did use it for us. 
Brother Ramsey told us when he talked to us at the community center that the white man used the Bible as a way to keep us humble and under his control. Dr. King turned around and used that same Bible the white man used to demean us to expose white people's wrongs against us. That Bible sure exposed those lies he had been telling us. What else did you learn from your grandfather, boy? We learned how Tarzan took care of all the Africans so the lions and tigers wouldn't eat him up. I bet Grandpa was laughing his head off seeing how you two were sucking up what he was telling you. We were all laughing at them coming out of those straw huts they lived in. They hardly wore any clothes, had bones in their noses and plates stuck in their lips. Ooh, they looked horrible. A Tarzan lived in a house up in a tree. Have you seen him swing across the jungle on his tree rope? Uh, Grandpa told Aunt Lily and Mama how we were cracking up when those Africans and animals start running across the jungle when they heard Tarzan swinging between those trees, hollering his head off. <laughs> Boy, could he holler. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you that those old movies you guys were watching were made to make Black people look inferior to white people? They used those films to concrete in our minds the belief that we were not much better than the Africans in those Tarzan movies. This is how lies get into your brain and make you stupid. Those movies were filmed to make us look stupid. Uh, Grandpa didn't tell us they were made to make us look stupid. He never let us in his room before. And we were happy to be in there seeing all those old fashioned things we've never seen before. <laughs> like that big old jukebox with all those <laughs> old time records in it. He said nobody sang songs like them anymore. He had these old movies he let us watch with him. You should have seen Tarzan run into the jungle with his knife on his side. When he didn't run to run, he had this big elephant he rode on. <laughs> I, I thought he would fall off its back. It was so big. <laughs> he had monkeys riding on his shoulders. Grandpa said those monkeys and Africans were his friends. Who do you think brought all those Africans over to this country? Brought them where? Read Bone Hugs' Sister's History book. You girls don't know nothing about your history. What do you mean we don't know nothing? Next thing you will be telling us is that your grandfather told you Tarzan brought Africans to this country. He did. Dumb girls. Grandpa said Tarzan had them Africans build a big boat and put all them brothers in it. It could hold. And told them he was, he was taking them to America to pick cotton. Queenie, <laughs> now do you see why it's important for you to learn your history? Your poor old grandfather was duped into believing all kind of lies because the white man was the only one telling him his history, girl. You're right. Grandpa is funny like that. He used to have me looking at, uh, looking at lots of old movies, too, when mom had him watching me. I believed just like Redbone until mama took me inside and told me that those movies were fake, that they were all her, grand that they were all her parents grew up looking at on those old black and white TVs. She said that movies made of black people back then were cartoons making them look ugly and dumb. I'm beginning to see how our people were brainwashed into seeing themselves in the way white people wanted us to be seen. Maybe you're right. I do need to learn my own history. We got our first lesson in black history today. Grandpa was having fun with you in 7 Up, probably lonely confined in that room by himself. He doesn't believe those movies are real. You see how black men were conned into processing their hair without a lie, wanting to be like white people instead of loving their own hair like you and Redbone now? Your grandfather was probably one of them when he had hair on his head. Mama told me back in the day when they made those black and white movies, very few, if any, people like our grandfather had been to Africa. And even those who knew the movies were fake didn't know how Africans lived in Africa. Just like you and 7-Up, they thought the way those filmmakers portrayed Africans was really how all Africans lived. You can bet they weren't making movies that showed how some white people lived before they became civilized troglodytes. What's troglodytes? People who lived in caves. White people lived in caves before they became so-called civilized. Don't you know that? Tarzan is make-believe, Redbone. That white man probably has never been to Africa. No one white man sure as heck was over in Africa taking care of Africans. Those filmmakers made up Tarzan, just like they made up blackface cartoons to demean back pe black people back in the day. They wanted to make black people looking at those films believe one white man had that much power over black people, even in Africa. 
Now, I understand what Brother Ramsey means when he says white people purposely twisted our history to make us look inferior to them. It made them feel it was okay to mistreat us, is what Brother Ramsey said. Nah, it ain't make-believe. Grandpa told us Tarzan brought them Africans over here just after King Kong came to this country looking for his wife. Grandpa told you what? Mm -hmm. Tarzan did bring those African brothers over here just like Grandpa said. And don't you know who King Kong is? <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about your history? He came over looking for his wife. Grandpa says white men took her back to America. They had to leave her the first time they came because King Kong had taken her. Your grandfather's teaching your brother the same lies he was taught to believe by white people who wanted to continue to depict us as inferior to them so that we couldn't rival them in any way. That's why they're always talking about it's our first time for winning or doing anything great. What they really are saying is that it's the first time they allowed us to compete against them. Your grandpa and other voices age back in the day looked at those movies not realizing that they had been filmed to entertain their audience at Black people's expense. The Black people believed, like everyone else, that those Africans were destitute. They had no one to explain to them how those movies were used to belittle our race of people. I'm going to tell grandpa as soon as I see him not to be showing films like that to little Black kids like that about our history. Candace, you're right. I need to learn my history. It didn't seem important before hearing my brother and realizing he believes what grandpa told him. I'm beginning to understand what happened to cause my grandpa and others his, of his age to think the way that they do, of, even about the color of their skin. I know not all do, but those that do can influence how younger kids like Redbone and 7 Up think. You can see it for yourself, like we did on television right in Grandpa's room. They ain't lies. King Kong did come over here looking for his wife. He must have found her because we saw him right on Grandpa's TV up on, the, uh, up on top of the Empire State Building carrying a white woman in his hand. A white woman. Uh -huh. Queenie's bedroom door opens and only the audience sees a person dressed in a King Kong suit enter the room with a white doll in his hand. King Kong jumps up and down, waving his white doll, then leaves the room. When those airplanes flying in the sky came and shot him down, King Kong fell on the ground so hard, he bust the concrete <laughs> wide open. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what happened to <laughs> the white woman he was carrying, Red Bull? <laughs> I don't know. She went on back to the white man that had got King Kong shot down, I guess. Now, you see how stupid that sounds? Teaching little kids lies like that? Down through history, white people have used all sorts of tricks to make us look bad, not only with films, as Brother Ramsey says, but blackface cartoons was one of their favorite ways as well. How did they use them? White people here in America seeing those movies believe they have to protect the helpless white woman from the terrifying black man desperate to have her, making it okay to hang black men. A black man, a, a black kid named Emmett Till was killed because he was said to have whistled at a white woman. Movies like King Kong incite that kind of behavior against black people, Redbone. Candace takes a seat on the bed where Redbone sits. Because our ancestors were Africans, the people back in the day viewed those films in a way that set a pattern of hatred and racial bigotry against our skin color. Because King Kong was a black gorilla, they used him to depict black men in a way that made them seem desperate to have white women. We're not animals any more than white people are, as hairy as they look sometimes. But how they depict us gives the illusion that we are and that there is some white man out there who came over to Africa performing superhuman feats, making all white people seem larger than life. Or they show people who are not white, living in poverty, that makes the viewer see them as primitive, developing in the minds of Black viewers that it is true of them as a race of people. They had no idea how Africans really lived in Africa. I don't understand. Those movies made Africans look like they were two steps short of being little more than the animals they lived among. It was a cruel way to depict an entire race of people, especially people who knew nothing about the country they were from. We have to learn to be proud of who we are. We have so much to offer our country as Black Americans, unfortunately for the white people living in this country. 
they have never taken advantage of the good things that can be gotten by treating us decent and with respect. Instead, they do the opposite. Your sister is right. We are a phenomenal people. Can you imagine living under slave castles, surviving the mid-passage, then coming to this country as slaves, enduring that horrible life until we fought and won our freedom, or so we thought? At least that's what Brother Ramsey said. He says we realized it was all a lie when we were forced to spend another hundred years living in conditions worse than slavery. Probably your grandfather lived in some of those horrible conditions himself. I think that's why Grandpa never talks about how he grew up as a little boy. It's probably too painful to think about. We can't blame him. He must understand he must understand and be glad we are now fighting back to have our rightful place in this country since they took us from Africa. I see why Candace insists that I learn real facts about my history. I can make sure you understand Grandpa better. What country is Africa? Africa is a continent, not a country, Redbone. That means it is so large, there are many countries in it. Very few people on the continent of Africa live in jungles. And most certainly not all people who live in Africa are Black, as many believe. There are many races of people living there as well as some who live in elaborate homes. Not all Africans were poor, even back in the day, and many are very wealthy today. It has been said that British white men living in Africa during the slave trade had black wives in Africa and white wives in England. They had children by their African wives they sent to England to be schooled. So that should tell you something. It would be the same as if somebody filmed a movie of homeless white people living in America eating out of garbage cans and the people who lived in another country viewed it. If they had never been to this country, many would believe all white Americans ate garbage. Now in schools, we are learning our own history and the many ways white people made us ashamed of our race without us knowing they were doing it. Okay. Queenie looks over at Candace, still seated on the floor beside her. Okay, Candace. I now understand how important it is to know about the people whose backs make it possible for us to survive. You keep telling me about those backs all the time. There is much to be learned about Africa, much more than those cruel filmmakers who make movies that hurt us will ever know. And yes, Queenie, I will continue to drill that into you so no one, not even your grandfather, can cause you to believe lies about your history. If, if one black man, let alone one white man, took his behind over to Africa carrying a little bitty knife talking about taking care of some Africans, they would have been carrying him out of there on a stretcher. We have our own superheroes who fought the cruel system we lived under to succeed, even in our own country, in our own century. Paul Robeson, Sidney Poitier, and Jesse Owens were heroes in your grandfather's day, just like Joe Lewis and Jack Johnson. As a boy, you need to hear the names of men who have done great things. They were men like Muhammad Ali and Gordon Parks who swung on ropes so that you can be what you want to become. Those ropes are symbolic of their fight against the hatred and violence they face to prove their excellence as men. Make no mistake about it, many lost their lives doing so. We're now learning that those types of movies Grandpa watched as a boy and now have you guys watching about superhero characters back in his day were all white superheroes. That gave the impression to many viewers that white people are superhuman above any other race on the planet when they are not Redbone. Candace pulled him close to her as she sat beside him on Queenie's bed. Tarzan wasn't king of the jungle? He didn't bring slaves over here? Tarzan was the king of nothing, boy. He's a made-up character. No white man came and took Africans from Africa and brought them to this country to pick cotton. Well, if the truth be told, Africans from Africa captured other Africans and sold them to the British slaves. Other British Africans? Slaves. Why would they do that? Rezo, back in the 16th, 17th, and 18th century, Africans were captured and brought to this country by slave traders who took them on ships from slave castles. They were sold to slave traders by Africans who came into their villages and captured them when they had tribal wars. The slave traders asked if they could buy the Africans they had captured in return for whatever the Africans wanted. The Africans sold some of the Africans they had captured to the slave traders. If the Africans had not agreed to the sale, 
the slave traders tried to take them without permission, the Africans would have been fighting back and too many would have, would have been killed. If that had happened, the slave traders wouldn't have been able to get enough slaves to sell. It was after the Africans sold them slaves that it gave the slave traders an opportunity to come and start taking all the people they could steal, even Africans they weren't supposed to be sold into slavery. You know how it is if you have a bag of candy and someone asks you for some? Well, you've given them two pieces of candy, but when you're not looking, they grab the whole bag. That's what happened to the Africans dealing with the slave traders. The slave traders got greedy and took all the Africans they could steal from them. Play. They should never have given the slave traders one piece of candy. I mean, any of their people. That's sad having them under, under those castles waiting to be sold. That's not good at all to sell your own people, even if you are mad at them. No, it wasn't a very smart thing to do because the captured people had to live in those prison castles, waiting for large slave ships with lots of white men on them, men who carried guns to shoot and kill the captive slaves if they tried to escape. They had to stay under those slave castles, sometimes for months, waiting for the slave ships to come for them. By the time Africans started fighting the British to keep their people, our ancestors were already in slavery with no one from any other country to fight for them. And so that you know, King Kong is fictional too. That story gives a sad impression that all of all the male gorillas in Africa, the biggest and the blackest, fell in love with a white boy. For real? For real, boy. Gorillas don't want to mate with any female other than their own kind. They're certainly not interested in mating or marrying no white woman. That's ridiculous. But Grandpa said... Candace is over here helping me learn and understand my history for this test I'm taking tomorrow. But it has helped me understand how important it is to know your own history in a way that makes sense to you and gives you a sense of pride. Our Grandpa was never given that opportunity. That's why I want you to learn about Black men doing great things. When I think of a woman I'm proud of, or other than the females in our family, I think of Angela Davis. She must have gone through a lot of abuse from a lot of people hating to see her become a part of the Black Panther Party to fight against the bigotry and hatred that is dug so deep in this racist system. That says how small-minded those haters are, but how much of a hero she was giving up going up against that kind of system. Candace, I did listen to Stokely Carmichael and those other activists speak on racial injustices, although I didn't take them seriously. Yes, Queenie, Angela Davis took wings and flew beyond what most women of any race would dare to do at a time when racial tension was so explosive. I'm glad you are taking your, your history seriously now. The first thing we must let Redbone know is that King Kong, didn't get shot off no Empire State Building. For real? He didn't get shot off the Empire State Building? No, he didn't. Even Superman is make-believe? Made up just like the rest. Because all those hero characters back in the day were white people. Many people of our race grew up thinking of white people as superhuman. And that is not a good thing. Because no real human can do the things those characters are portrayed as doing. Especially when they depict black people just the opposite. It is important for Black children to understand any person who learns how to make movies like those can have their, ch their characters any race they want them to be. But most importantly, it's that you learn your history as it happened and what great people came from that history, like film directors such as Sidney Poitier and Paul Robeson. They are Black men who are still important to our race because they had to fight against real insurmountable odds. Candace is right. You must learn your real history. Not allow someone who hates you tell you what it, what it was. You can learn to be a filmmaker and make films about heroes of our race who have done and are still doing great things. For real? You can become one of them if you want to because of all the sacrifices that those before you made. Redbone picks up the history book and hugs it. Well, I still like Tarzan even if he is make-believe. Why? When the Africans took gifts from the British, the British took their gifts from the Africans, which was the Africans. Uh, they made slaves out of them, treating them mean and cruel. Like Grandpa told me in 7-Up, Tarzan was a true hero because he was always kind to the Africans, never mistreating them or the animals in Africa. To me, that made him a real superhero, unlike the people who were mean and cruel to their gifts or those that sold them away as soon as they captured them. 
Red Bone, you want to talk cars and your grandpa likes him, boy. It's okay to like white people if they deserved it, but you must remember to make sure they are for real and not taking advantage of you. That way you're being respectful to your grandfather, but also attempting to get him to tell you what his real thoughts are. I'm going to write films about black superheroes that are big and brave and can fly in the sky as soon as I get into my room. <laughs> I don't think I want to write about one that stands on the Empire State Building getting shot holding on to a white woman. That's too <laughs> silly. <laughs> Yes, it is silly. Right now, I need you to leave so that Candace can help me ace this test you interrupted. Tomorrow, you and I are going to talk to Grandpa about the movies he's showing you and Seven up. He might have something to tell us about our history that he's kept inside and needs someone to share it with. She hugs him. He leaves, and Candace and Queenie get back to studying. Now, where were we? Who was the Black hero who... Curtain closes. Mm -hmm.